So, um, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the session today. My name is Rebecca Wright, and I'm the director for the HP Digital Life Garage here in Dubai. So, I'm just going to take a few minutes to tell you what we're trying to do here in the region, and not just in Dubai, but across the whole Middle East. So, this is the latest in um, Generation Executive Briefing Centre. And what that means is that we are trying to work with our customers and our partners in a different way. We're trying to work with them to accelerate their aspirations and their dreams into a, a proof of concept or a proof of value. So it's a really different way of interacting. And hence why we're trying to do something different here today. Um, the whole garage um, works with an ecosystem of partners, and we are delighted that Logicom is one of those key partners that we're working with and um, are also running this session today. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Priyanka, the sales manager for Logicom. She's going to introduce you to the session. We have speakers here today from HPE, Logicom and the partners. And we're going to be looking to share some insights into what we see going on in a number of areas in the region. So Priyanka, over to you. Thank you, Rebecca. Good morning, everybody. And uh, to the gentlemen here, thank you very much for coming. And uh, some of you have like come from uh, really far away, so thanks very much. And uh, this was a, a concept that we were just speaking about a few days ago, and I'm really excited and happy to see it uh, come together like this, because uh, we had something in mind where we want to, uh, the times are changing now, the trends in IT is make, becoming different. So we wanted to hear from people, uh, you know, how it's changed, how it's making an impact right now. And that's what we want to hear from the horse's mouth uh, how things are being uh, changed now because you are the guys who's going out to the market you are the guys who's hearing from your end users what they want what has changed right now how exactly we need to address the market so today's session is uh, mostly going to be an insight about uh, from the people who is at the market, uh, how things are changing, uh, what exactly we can do to make the change in a better way, and uh, how uh, HP as an organization is addressing this. Uh, and thank you from the Logicom team uh, uh, to all of you, uh, the people who's joined online. And uh, it, I mean, I think COVID in a way has helped us a lot because uh, today we are thinking in a hybrid level. We have people here, we have people there, and uh, it, it's become magical. So I think this is uh, what uh, IT world needed. So thank you everyone. And uh, uh, over to Murad. So we will be going to the first panel. And yep. thanks a lot, Priyanka. Um... This is Murat Kutkut. I'm from HPE. I'm Chief Customer Innovation Officer. And today, uh, basically, we will be running three separate panels uh, discussing three different topics. We see hot topics and we see uh, some good demands from the marketplace. The first one will be around hybrid workplaces. The second one will be the new trends in the storage solutions. And definitely, we will be looking for your feedbacks on that. And the third one, the cloud experiences wherever you go. And uh, uh, what we believe around the hybrid IT implementation. Without further ado, uh, let me welcome the panelists for the first panel. Please, you can be with me on the stage. So the first panel will be about the hybrid workplaces. So let us just unmute the mics. And I'm happy uh, to welcome the panelists, Venkat from Seven Seas, Monsi from Alpha Data and Dimitris from HPE. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before we start, I think we need to run a quick poll just to get some insights from you. And this is very important. Uh, as we said at the beginning, the main purpose is not just to share with you our point of view. We need to get your feedback. We need to get your views about what you see in the market so that we can align together, join forces to match these needs in a better way. So, uh, Lena, can you run the poll, please? So, the first question, in which domain do you see most of the storage demands? So, either NVMe, big data, hybrid cloud, traditional, server client type of implementation. So we see till now most of the demand around hybrid cloud. Uh, 
just a few seconds more. Twenty-one. Get the answers. Can we? If we get, if we can get the fifth two, that would be great. Okay. So most of the implementation around hybrid cloud and house. Um, actually, this question should be for the storage, not for, not this board. It's okay. We can use the answers in the second panel. That's fine. We can end the poll and run the second one. This is also for the symbol, so we need to stop the poll. Okay. I think in the meantime we can have okay that's fine. Break. Let's let's uh, continue with the session. We can keep the poll till the end of the back. So if we close the poll and we will be happy to get your feedback at the end of the session. So the start point. So basically, this digital era is impacting our lives, either in the personal or professional level, in both sides. And uh, we start interacting, we start doing our work in a completely different way. The new concept of hybrid workplaces arrived even before COVID, but definitely COVID expedited the adoption um, uh, for such uh, hybrid workplaces. Now, after even, COVID, we start seeing a lot of leaders emphasizing on the main benefits that they are getting by allowing their teams to work in this implement in new hybrid workplaces, and they want to get the benefits out of that. Everything sounds great, and we got a lot of insight from even uh, employees saying that their productivity get increased big time by working from home, and they were saving a lot of efforts, time, traveling time, and so on, and use that to have a quality time of work and quality time with their families. So we see big benefits of doing that. However, according to many surveys, many challenges arrived by just moving towards this new model. One of the main challenges was around using the technology. Are the end users ready for that? Are organizations enabling their employees with the right tools that they can use while working in a, in a remote workplaces or not? As you can see here in the slides, a lot of um, highlights for many challenges that they see, but on top comes the technology. Definitely it varies from sector to sector, maybe in the banking sector, in the government, we see this challenge may become priority two or three, depends on how advanced these organizations are, how ready they are of uh, enabling their employees to work anywhere from any place. And from company's point of view, uh, they see different challenges if we compare it with the employee himself. One of the main challenges that these companies see around security, how they can protect their main assets, either it can be data or tools, while allowing their, their employees to work uh, from a remote places from home or from any uh, other place. These are many challenges that as a technology provider all of us work in that domain would like to address it and would like to overcome it with the proper solutions that can be offered for this market segment and definitely in this panel we want to highlight on what are these challenges in more details and how we can help together definitely at the end we would like to hear your feedback we have other ideas we have other views on the same problem uh, best practices that you manage to implement and adapt somehow that everybody can learn and we can join you in that. 
Let me start the discussion with the panel now, with Venkat, starting by uh, the need for VDI, because we see it's part of these hybrid workplaces, and the VDI can get a lot of benefits for that. Venkat, please, if you can give yes. us uh, your view on that. Right. First of all, thank you, Project uh, and HP, for inviting me to talk about this today. It's, it's a very uh, important topic, no doubt, and very relevant uh, currently. Uh, as you will uh, see, Lividia has been around for 20 years plus, right? It, it came along with virtualization, server virtualization, and VDI. More or less, they came uh, out at the same time. Citrix, uh, while VMware led the initiatives around server virtualization, Citrix uh, led the initiatives around and, and development innovation around the, the virtual desktops. <clears throat> so what happened back over these years? Every year, we used to see uh, market pundits coming out and saying that this year VDA is going to be doing well, right? This year it's going to uh, exceed all expectations, but it never happened. And just to, on the lighter side, to give you an example, uh, we have uh, many of you who follow cricket, right? So we have a team. Uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore. So they have been going through the same uh, problems, right? The last 14 years, they have been trying to win the tournament, but and every year fans have been trying to uh, motivate them, get them around, but they've never been able to cross the line. So 14 years, but they're not the very competing teams. It's the same fate with the VDI. So <clears throat> what we uh, uh, observe today is what, what was so far hindering or whatever happened that it should have happened, didn't happen, just turned around in, in one single event, right? That's, that's the pandemic that, that, that I'm referring to. That, so the global pandemic pushed organizations to make their employees work from home. Uh, some of, uh, we, we have reports, especially in the West, in the, in the United States and Europe, where some of the financial services organizations took calls and in a matter of 15 days, two weeks, they moved 8,000 workers uh, completely, their infrastructure. They, they asked the IT leaders to change the infrastructure, deploy VDI, and, and make uh, all the workers work from home. Some had 8,000 employees, some had 10,000 employees. It, it varied, but, but all this happened. Probably we didn't witness uh, that many uh, changes in the Middle East. Uh, pro we generally know that Middle East adoption rates to technology is, is pretty slow. That could be one of the reasons, but nevertheless, uh, we are not late. We are we're still in the same uh, boat, in, in the same issues. The, the COVID is not just going to go away just like that. Uh, there are going to be ways of, of, of tuning ourselves to work in different ways and, and hybrid working is probably the, going to be the norm, right? Now, just to highlight a few points from, from the industry report, uh, the market for VDI in 2019 uh, was for 4.1 billion, right? Uh, after 2019, uh, industry agencies have come forward and put together uh, a study. I'm, I'm referring to one such study by Market and Research, uh, an independent group in the US, United States, where they say that by 2027, it's going to grow to 13 billion, which is on, on a year on year of 14.4% uh, growth, which is huge. Uh, and uh, when, when you when you when you compare to what VDI has done the last 20 years, so keeping that in view, it's a tremendous potential, tremendous opportunities for for all of us in the industry uh, to be able to align our focus, do what we can do in the VDI, and uh, not to forget the benefits that we have in VDI, right? Efficient use of compute resources, centralized management support, uh, adaptability, flexibility. Of course, some of the points that Murad mentioned, uh, quality of life, right? That's most important. People <clears throat> need not travel physically. So you could have meetings online. You could, you could connect with people online. You could finish, collaborate and finish projects quickly. And, and companies, especially the software companies, which uh, make their uh, staff travel worldwide, because most of the companies, if you say US, they have outsourced employees working from India and, and elsewhere. So they need to make their employees travel year, year long. So that reduces to a great extent. So it, it saves on cost, it improves productivity, and, and it, it helps even serve customers better in the long run. 
Now, what are the sectors that we need to focus are mainly the financial services, the banking, education, and the government. Because these are the people where you, you have about 80% plus uh, users uh, working right out of the desktops most of the time. So that being said, what will happen after, after COVID? So those companies which have already you know, shifted to the online mode of working will continue to do so. They may ask their employees to come back, but there may be uh, some kind of a, some, some people may be asked to come to offices, some people may work from home. And uh, just quickly to summarize, in terms of technology, what, what we have here, we have technologies from HP partnered with the ecosystem. Uh, Nutanix is one of them. Uh, blueprints are available, architectures are available, where you deploy centralized desktops and allow users to access remotely. So these technologies are well uh, established in the market and people will continue to use them. Thank you. Great, thanks a lot, Trinket, for the insights. Really appreciate it. And hopefully we can leverage these demands uh, with the proper solutions that can be offered. A second question will be for Monsi. What about security aspects? By allowing such flexible workplaces, what's your view on that, please? Thank you, Murata, for the introduction. And thank you, HP and Logico, for arranging such a wonderful event. Uh, my name is Monsi from Alpha Dubai. And uh, the uh, already Murad has given some introduction about what is a remote work. This is a new norm after the COVID uh, introductions. And so uh, we all uh, aware that this is not something new for us because we heard the terminology in very long back and this has become a new norm here. Of course, there are pros and cons associated with the uh, implementation of a remote work uh, activity for most of the enterprise organization. And in this enterprise organization are more keen to deliver the security aspects of the remote uh, workers. Why? Because the, the work environment, the physical and the, uh, the virtual environment, what they are accessing the remote data and the connectivity and the uh, data is not properly encrypting. So, of course, the many, many measuring factors are implemented for the uh, remote works for the, uh, the proper running of the enterprise organizations. So having said that, not only stopping the remote work like a VDA or the remote uh, office work, of course, people or the enterprise IT who are migrating their environment to a, a cloud environment or in a hybrid cloud environment, the poll itself is showing that more than 50% of the companies are uh, insisted or they are forced to do to in a hybrid cloud environment. So that means they have some workload in the on-premises environment and some in the public cloud, any, any outside the uh, cloud environment. So of course, they all should be uh, keen to deliver the uh, distributed architecture of a cloud environment, especially for the, uh, the microservices or the cloud native services of an environment. So HP GreenLake is one of the aspects. So we all know that HP GreenLake is not a new technology to the market. It's a consumption-based model. So HP GreenLake has come up with something, a new idea called GreenLake Lighthouse. So GreenLake Lighthouse is the cloud native cloud services platform under the umbrella of GreenLake. So where customer can leverage uh, the infrastructure, these compute storage networking with the cloud services control plane on top of that, it will be under the green lake, it will directly connect to the green lake uh, center. So eventually they can manage the distributor cloud environment and the multi cloud environment. So this will be the one main aspect with HP as put forward that. So having said that, we will we may ask that what is the security? So of course, in any cloud environment, the inside in the cloud environment is uh, is a shared responsibility of the customer, and off the cloud is the responsibility of the cloud vendor. If you are insisting to go with the cloud uh, GreenLake cloud solution, what is the assurance that we will ensure the uh, the security aspect of uh, the entire infra, the entire solution that not only uh, limiting to the uh, software or application level, it has to uh, uh, include the infrastructure platform. To pretend this one, HP has come up with a new solution called the Project Aurora. So Project Aurora is a chain of security solution which will ensure the security of your infrastructure and data from the silicon level, from the chip level to the workload environment, all the way from the chip level to the hardware, to the hypervisor and OS level, and it will extend on top of the platform and the uh, application level. So this is the high level uh, security solution. So we all know that ILO is not something new from HP. The, the, uh, so, uh, uh, security solutions which HP has included in almost all the uh, HP infrastructure solution and along with the third party or the open source solution like speed or software the uh, silicon uh, root of trust and this and en en engagement HP has come up with a new solution called the project Aurora so this will ensure the security uh, assurance of your data from edge to uh, cloud 
So these are the high level aspect, which is security concerns on the remote workers, as well as the distributed cloud. And, uh, Thanks a lot, Monsi, to provide some insight about the security aspect of the remote workplaces or the hybrid workplaces, even inside the data center, starting from to the physical layer, yeah. which is a level of trust. Appreciate it. Now, Dimitris, to you. We hear some potential needs in the market for these <laughs> hybrid workplaces, and we hear some challenges. Now, what's HPE point of view beyond? on what we hear and what type of solutions can be offered to simplify this move for customers and to adapt this new operating model. Right. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and highlight actually how HP can help the customers in such a kind of uh, transformation journey because it's a kind of transformation what we are going through. The basis how HP is helping is um, we need two things. We need to have the right network. We need to have a robust and agile network and here in HP, we do have uh, in our in our organization Aruba, and we are very proud of it, because Aruba is help us is helping our customers to uh, take care of uh, to, to resolve this such a kind of challenges. So networking is there. Um, the, the biggest challenge we had to resolve is was to to enhance the employees. We wanted to we wanted to ensure that they will have the same experience as they will work in the headquarters. Um, to have the same experience remotely. This can be a branch, this can be somewhere around the world in the most uh, um, non-approximate, let's say, place, or it can be uh, uh, the, the, the home office of, its, uh, of the users. Uh, and how cool it is, how cool it is uh, to take care um, uh, and, and to provide the same experience um, also in the most remote uh, branches or, or offices. So we can replicate the same uh, security policies, we can replicate the same message ideas, we can replicate exactly the same environment. Of course, networking, as I say, it's, it's a must. However, as the previous speaker said, um, we should also take care uh, the security. The sec so this is the second thing HP is helping our customers. Uh, it's not only connecting. We need to make sure that the way the user is connected, it's, it's, uh, it's connected with a very secure way. And with HP, again, we, by deploying our, our own ecosystem and deploying our own technology and also our own consulting services, we are helping the customer to, 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 to go through, um, to follow the right approach. So as I said, this is the basis, connect and security. Um, however, I would like to emphasize more how we can help to enhance the productivity of, uh, of the remote workers. I will start with the, first of all, with the traditional office workers. And here we have the VDI, the VDI services. Um, in HP, we have the privilege to be a technology agnostic company. And we are also very privileged to have on board a number of experts who can, who can help the customers to go through in such a kind of digital transformation journey in the VDI. So what we can do there, we can sit down with the customer, we can understand, we can understand the environment, we can assess, and we can uh, actually recommend them what is the right technology for them to deploy. Yes, there are a number of vendors, but not all vendors are suitable for all customers. Um, the customers should uh, go through and understand what is their offering and deploy the solution properly. So no matter if it is VMware, Citrix, for instance, we are there with the customer to support them and let them know what is the best, the most suitable solution for them. The other area I would like to emphasize more, it's not only the traditional office workers. And HP has uh, also um, the right solution for supporting the field workers. This is the workers that can be in the oil and gas, can be perhaps on the top of an antenna, of telecommunication antenna, and they want to seek assistance. They want to... Um, they need to be connected and get advice from a gurus for a technical, uh, for a complex technical issue they have. And due to commute issues, um, um, a technical guru is not able to uh, support him on the spot. So virtually, by providing the um, VRG solution, the software as a service uh, solution we're providing to the customer, we are providing the right tool to support them and to, to support them remotely by providing uh, by providing the best practices and the, the right uh, and, and the right uh, instructions on the spot so this is um, this is the areas i would like to emphasize about uh, about uh, hp um, uh, something i would like to highlight uh, is the green lake technology whatever we discussed um, uh, considering that we went through covid 19 and considering that all customers and all organizations had issues with the cash flow. Um, whatever we discuss, it can go, they can go under the Green Lake uh, solution. So the customers were making sure the customers were paying only what they are using 
and for uh, helping to support their financial models, um, they can pay this in a monthly billing. Great. Thanks a lot, Dimitris, uh, for the overview about what HV can help, starting from connectivity, how to connect these employees to the different digital services offered by the organization, securing such a communication, maintaining the experience with the VDI to make sure that they are getting a better experience for, for the end users, and ending up even by remote support guidance, which is a tool that can be used to support remote workers with maybe some guidance, instructions, uh, hands-on, maybe some experiences that they can get. Hopefully, this gives you a quick overview about how we see the market, where are the trends, and how we can help. Now, we need to hear your feedback, starting maybe by the poll. The poll is ready. So please, if you can provide some insights by answering these questions. The first question is around, what is the most challenging work experience customers faced in 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic? Maybe? If you can have a single choice, it would be great. The most challenging work experience, either it's having the right collaboration tools, having the best device to access the corporate, connectivity issues, or all of the above. Of course, the easiest answer is all of the above, definitely. <laughs> but uh, if, we, if you can be more specific, that will be even better. We see some answers around connectivity. Tell six participants, please, if you can provide the insight. It's part of the exercise that we do. We need to get some information from you to make sure we are moving in the right direction, or maybe we need to think differently. Having the right collaboration tools, two answers only. Just a few seconds, and we will move to the next question. Sorry? Started answering the second question. Yeah. And don't forget the second question. Post COVID, would you shift to VDI and ask your employee to use, bring your own device? Is it part of what, what you see in the marketplace? Are customers adapting this new technology and new flexibility scroll, models? Option scroll scroll question number two or not? They can scroll down. Online users can scroll down. Yeah. Question two. We see more yes, so we start seeing more adoption. And for question three, what are the latest requirements for a hybrid workplace? Work securely, safety at workplace. So security still becomes another important factor. Okay, this, these are good insights. Thanks a lot. Uh, for the remaining time, how much time we have? Because we, we are expecting some feedback, some questions. So if you have any feedback, please unmute yourself. <laughs> Give us that feedback or any question, maybe if you have in mind. You see it a big demand. Is there a role that we can play? How we can help you? Even for the physical audience here in the room, if you have any feedback, please let us know. No, no, you can, you can. Definitely. This is more towards the online ones. No, no, both, both are okay. So. We are waiting VDI, so next, next meeting should be VDI. So. It's okay. <laughs> If you have any feedback, give us know. Uh, no, I, I have a question basically. Uh, rather than a question, it's like you know uh, asking you about. We we all know about you know we have had uh, some Green Lake sessions, some uh, hybrid sessions, and all that. So the technology is there, but what is lacking basically from my point of view is the go-to-market strategy. We all are like, I mean, we go to the customer and we ask them, okay, what's your plan for cloud? Okay, I have this. 
So either he's already signed up with uh, the public cloud guys, or he's planning, or he does not have a clear you know, vision why he why he wants himself in next year or so. Because now it's transforming, or it has. I think the industry has transformed 90 degrees, if not 180. Yeah. So the question is that from the vendor side, there has to be a go-to-market strategy that needs to be discussed with the people on the ground who are going to the customers and you know uh, trying to mobilize them, change their mindset from public cloud. Every time it's not uh, a cost that basically comes in picture and tells you that, okay, let's take a decision and go for a private cloud. So we need to have a balanced strategy, a go-to-market strategy that yeah. can win win us uh, you know, projects or win us the customers rather than we spend six months or a year with the customer and finally say, oh no, I, 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 you know, my management is not satisfied and they decided to go with public cloud yeah. or they decided to go with some other yeah. vendor. Yeah. So there has to be a strong strategy in place that sort of changes the mindset of the customer than, and leaving no option for him to go for other, uh, you know, just, so, so I, I agree totally some... with this uh, comment. Um, that's uh, that, very valid. However, it's you know, maybe a general comment. It's not only for the workplaces, the hybrid workplaces. It's applicable to all the new trends, which is fine. Now, in our beliefs, usually, we need to be proactive. So we should not wait for a customer to think of something. We need to start the education cycle in a very early stage, opening <laughs> their eyes on what's happening, what's their challenges, starting from their business problems and map all of these solutions in a way that can address some of these challenges, rather than waiting for an RFP to be in the market. Then you are very late, no, somebody else sets the scene and that's it. So we need to be proactive, approaching the key decision makers. The start point is a business challenge, not the technology, because this is the way you build the proper business case and you show the value of moving to, to that route. The more you are proactive, the more you secure. Then we start from advisory. So consulting need to be there. Again, as you highlighted, to just educate them, show them uh, yeah. different aspects, uh, opening their eyes. Yeah. Then the technology discussion, the pricing will come later on, definitely. Yes. But the start point, being proactive, the tricky part, being proactive, know who are the stakeholders. Then start from advisory, from consulting, rather than from pitching certain solutions. But again, uh, I, I, I hear your voice. Uh, it should be more clearer strategy, go yeah. to market, which is clear for even our partners to make sure they are part of that strategy and they are inherited from these there different are, activities. Because I believe there are a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of plus points with GreenLake yeah. than on public cloud. And because we, we cannot only differentiate or decipher between public and private with yeah cost part of it it has to be something else that that needs i think for okay. us for us who are on the ground working with the customers you know speaking with them uh, trying to uh, counsel them sometimes or consult them about this part of the strategy or this part of the uh, you know uh, products which are which are available but they are not aware of it but being aware that there is a private cloud is something else then the value it brings to me yeah. or i can share with the, with the customer yeah yeah. That's really important. I think in, in the third panel, we are discussing the cloud part, and I think we, we, we will touch base in more details yeah. on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks a lot. I think uh, it's the end of this, the first panel. Um, I would like to invite Harris to we, run we didn't the get second any panel. Online questions, right? so uh, are case, there any other questions? on the chat, if you can just Anything check the in chat. the chat. Check the chat because there are 11. Okay, perfect. So, thanks a lot for being with us today and let's move to the second panel thank you. Thank, thank you thank you good day Thank you, Murad, uh, for the wonderful session about what's going on in the trend.
and uh, today we will spoke, uh, speak about uh, the storage trend and uh, uh, so uh, we will talk about the storage trend what is happening in the market post covid a lot of things changed and the customers want uh, you know different way of working or taking insights out of uh, storage and uh, the portfolio of what hp offers so we will talk about that and also um, you know the new trends which is going in the market so before I uh, you know, start anything, should we run the poll? Yeah. All right, uh, we have four questions ready. In which domain do you see most of the storage demands? You can provide your feedbacks, that will be much helpful. At the cloud. Okay. A lot of uh, traction in hybrid cloud and in NVMe. Data. More uh, towards Indian solution being a challenge in setting up. You will see a change from 10 GB to 100 GB and 30 GB to 100 GB. It's the it's in the market. Yes. Thank you for your feedback. Um, so we have a panel, myself, Harish, and I'm the pre sales for Logicon, and we have Sanjay from uh, GDM, and Ram from Qubit, and uh, Santosh, our technical guru from HPE. So uh, before we talk about it, I want to, you know, uh, give you an evolution of how HPE as a vendor or one of the founders of Silicon Valley, how they have uh, evolved in the storage market or storage uh, platform uh, last 75 years. Uh, so I want to you know, tell you guys about my own experience because I spent close to 15 years with HPE right now, almost the entire career of me, uh, 13 years in HPE India and uh, two years in Logicon distribution for HPE free sales. So if you have heard about the storage, uh, the life cycle with HPE, uh, we had, uh, you know, started very, very small from uh, MSAs, uh, the P2000s, which is from the Dotil Corporation. And uh, from there, uh, you know, we evolved uh, through EVA and the uh, 3 par from the 3 par we have hit a new uh, a trend, what we call A6, and um, also the chunk led concerts. And after that, um, we have moved to uh, acquis through acquisition of HP Nimble, uh, we got the analytics side of it, that is the info side. And with all these trends coming up, and because HP is keeping up the pace, what is happening in the market. And uh, they have done their own R&D and they came up with the wonderful mission critical, uh, mission critical storage, that is uh, uh, Primera. Again, uh, the Primera was a mix of uh, your SSD flash world and also NVMe. NVMe was kept, you know, uh, getting into the trend and there was a lot of focus towards NVMe and customer wants data to be processed faster and access faster and they want to take insights out of it. Uh, and they want to you know, reduce the time for the innovators uh, who can concentrate on their core job rather than doing the administrative jobs. So that's when HP thought about it and they came up with the wonderful solution or NVMe storage, all, like all NVMe storage, that is the primary, uh, sorry, Alatra portfolio. And a similar way they have gone through in other uh, world of converged world. I would say so when our uh, competition i don't want to name it but uh, our competitions were trying to get into the uh, you know converged world we were already there with uh, converged system 700 750 and then uh, we started with uh, hyper converged uh, 380 and again uh, through these innovations uh, hp came up with uh, lhn that is left hand networks uh, starts a store virtual portfolio 
and again through acquisition we went into hp simplicity and also we want to address that hyperconverged market but we want to do it in a disaggregated way so that's when we started with uh, our uh, the latest offering that is nimble dhci or even the nimble dhci as an option go to go with aletra uh, dhci so the hp uh, is as a vendor uh, i don't think any other vendors have been competing that much and you know keeping up with the trends of storage what customer wants and how to uh, access data and analyze and take insights of, the, of outside the data and you know give a meaningful uh, output to the customers and uh, you know everybody who uses the uh, storage <clears throat> so uh, keeping this in mind every enterprise right now want to get into the digital transformation mode so here uh, what they want is like they're working on four aspects uh, they want to have uh, operational efficiency and they also want to have uh, you know insights faster and they want to get revenue out of it so they don't want to wait for a longer period right to get the revenue out of it so they're working on all these technologies so all enterprises are focused towards these aspects and the data should be always available for the applications which customers are running right and also uh, they want the faster solutions where uh, they can take outputs and give to customers and they have the customer experience should be completely reimagined so that's the focus for hp right now so right now you can find the data everywhere in applications that is faster and edge like iot's your cars uh, your automated uh, you know uh, iot cars and other devices and uh, edge edges uh, your niche market and also hybrid clouds they don't want to put the complete data on the cloud they want to keep the data on the cloud and also on prime so they want you know, hybrid strategy is the new strategy so with keeping this in mind Sanjay, what is your take on NVMe storage for HP? Good morning and welcome all. Yeah. Uh, here I'd like to thank uh, HP and Logiclon for getting for having me on this platform. So I'm Sanjay Cardoza and I'm a SDDC specialist with GVME Abu Dhabi. I'd like to share some numbers with you. Right? And they are from partners like Gartner and uh, IDC. Right. So 87%. Right? So let's start with 87%. So, what is happening now? All enterprise, okay, everything is being digitized. Uh, uh, companies, enterprise, they're searching for new ways to use digital content. And uh, that so that they can leverage their competitive advantages, their business differentiation, and even employee productivity. Here, they are also they are using digital content for new revenue streams. So what Gartner predicts is 87% of all this storage arrays that you'll have by 2020 would be flash arrays. So I'll take an example. Everyone is speaking about pandemic. Right? And this pandemic actually was a catalyst for digital transformation. We were all working from home. Right? We were ordering in food, doing all our shopping, right? and we were even getting our groceries. Right? So this changes has impacted IT, and it has impacted the growth of IT. So what, what happens now is uh, everything is moving towards uh, faster content, all these changes requirement. And then new storage trends are coming up. New protocols like NVMe. NVMe. Okay. New protocol like NVMe is coming up. These are super fast protocol. They are replacing SCSI protocols, okay, which was good. Okay but it was designed for spinning this. Now, speaking about NVMe, I'll just clear some doubts over here. Uh, NVMe is a protocol. It is not the media type. Yes, it has different form factors like uh, SSDs, it has PCIe cards, and it has M M2 cards. Right. right. So what NVMe does uh, uh, against SAS, SAS has a skew depth of around 256, exactly. whereas NVMe has a skew depth of 
64,000 and 64,000 commands per queue. So it changes the ball game, it changes the market. Now, to get all this fast, uh, super fast, the transformation, it lowers down the latency and you can get the best out of your server, your storage, and your storage network on the whole. Right. SaaS relatively is cheap, inexpensive, whereas NVMe, again, relatively is expensive. But uh, what it does, like I said, the speed that it has, the queue depth, higher queue depth, and uh, more commands, the simplicity, and it gets you the best performance. Right. Okay. So, com coming across, what NVMe also has is uh, it has all the logic okay, in the controller chipset, which is on the solid state disk. Then that, that, okay, so Gartner, what Gartner says is, what Gartner says is NVMe is going to be the number one storage of the future. Right. Coming to the complexity part of it, okay? IT organizations are going to spend 68% okay, on to their next solution. Okay? And they're saying that the storages are complex. Here, I would like to position uh, or I'd like to say how HP positions HP in InfoSight with the predictive analytics and more than 50,000 arrays, okay, three power arrays, and the Nimble, Elytra, all connected together. It gives you not just simple charts and data, it gives you perspective uh, approach on how things are done. Lastly, just to finish it off, uh, according to IDC, with a 15% CAGR, okay, by from 2020 to 2023, we'll have a 53% growth okay. on IT spending on flash. Absolutely. I will agree. Thank you, Sanjay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, keeping our storage in mind, Ram, so what is your take on the storage portfolio for yes. HPE and Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay, for the insights on how uh, the market position is moving. So I want to come back. Hi, hi everybody. My name is Ram Prakash. I'm from Kibit Technology. Thanks, Logicom and HP for that, having me in the session. So coming back to Harish's question, how we started uh, positioning HP storage, what are the uh, storage that we've been offering? So as uh, Harish was saying, the HP MSA. So the MSA has been in the industry for uh, you can say the MSA is the number one HP storage in the market for more than 10 years. Right. They've been number one. And uh, why? Because of their so uh, less complexity in deploying a solution, uh, easy to use, and it can, it can be deployed uh, on, on most of the use cases from the customer. So the HP MSA is positioned as uh, entry-level storage, and it can be used on most of the wide cases. So in general, I want to term, or in HP, uh, I want to term uh, the storage positioning into different categories. One of them, uh, one of them is the entry level storage or the general, general purpose storage, which we have MSA and HP simplicity as the storage. So when we talk about MSA, I, we already, I already said that MSA is the number one storage in the market for the past 10 plus years. Uh, which is basically you can be used for a hybrid workload. Uh, you can use it for all flash, uh, all flash workload, and it is very simple to use. And it can be uh, one of the uh, main uh, storage that we need to position for an entry level or an SMB customer. Right. It covers most of the use cases from virtualization, storing your uh, CCTV. It covers most of the use cases. When we talk about the uh, uh, simplicity. Okay, simplicity. HP simplicity is a hyperconverged solution. Uh, the main use case of uh, HP simplicity will be like when your customer is all 100% virtualized, and this solution provides something like you don't have to have a, a different uh, different architecture or different storage. So it eliminates all things. It is like a one box solution where you can have your uh, server storage and networking inbuilt and it is mostly for a customer who 
who has the hundred percent workload on virtualization. So the next comes is the uh, business critical storage. So when it comes to business critical storage, uh, business critical storage works always on an SLA. So when we talk about an SLA, they need a higher performance storage, which with less downtime, but they need the performance to be always on the up level. So in this uh, portfolio, we have uh, two storages, or uh, we normally position uh, HP Nimble storage. So Nimble has a two flavors. You can say as a Nimble storage, it gives high availability and gives you a guarantee of six nines, which is uh, which gives you resiliency and you can work on an all flash array as well as hybrid workload. And uh, when you talk about Nimble, uh, Nimble also has another portfolio which is called desegregated hyperconvert solution. So when uh, we talk about a hyperconvert solution, we already have simplicity. But why you can ask why there is a decoupled or deconstructed hyperconvert uh, technology as a different portfolio? Right. So when it comes to uh, uh, hyperconvert, it is mostly on VM uh, centric data workload. But what D DHA offers apart from simplicity or any other hyperconvert solution is they can se uh, segregate compute, they can scale the compute and storage independently. And there, there are many use cases that where the customer data, they want to have a storage to be positioned into a uh, outside the DHA, uh, outside the uh, virtualized environment. So in this case, Nimble will be the Nimble DHA is in the best fit where a customer wants to have the storage to the outside, uh, the VM environment, they can position DHCI. So next, one of the important thing that uh, no other vendors in the industry offer is the 100% availability. So that's where we move into the mission critical storage. So the mission critical storage, uh, why we call mission critical storage is only HP offers a 100% guarantee that uh, outside the storage, the story doesn't go out. Nobody gives the guarantee. So that's where we have the Ultra family on the Primera, which gives you 100% availability, which are mostly, uh, even it goes one level up than the uh, business critical solution. Uh, and uh, moving uh, forward, we have something called cloud uh, management storage. So uh, even um, what is cloud management? It is basically on the DSSC architecture where you have the cloud console available for your storage levels. So that's where the Ultra 6000 and 9000 comes into the picture. And also uh, the uh, uh, the DSCC has been pushed to the Nimble uh, Generation 5. So it gives the customers uh, the flexibility of having a, a easy management of the solution moving to the cloud. Thank okay. you, Ram. So we heard about the evolution of storage and the importance of NVMe and the storage portfolio. But using all this from uh, Santosh, we want to hear why that would be a go-to strategy uh, for us uh, when we talk to our customers, partners, everybody in the market, or even to the competition. When we talk about it, we want to know uh, why that would be a uh, go-to strategy. What do you think, Santosh? First of all, thank you, Harish, uh, uh, for uh, inviting me. Uh, and thank you, Logica. And uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, so if you see uh, with HP, why uh, go to strategy and why HP, we can, I can say that, see, if you remember that when we acquired uh, uh, Nimble Storage, InfoSight came into picture at that time, HP put a roadmap, having an intelligent data platform, wherein there is a roadmap, like, you know, to how we will go ahead and how we will serve our customers, especially. So whatever may be the workload, it may be, you can say mission critical, something in the cloud or something you use for general purposes, we try to get insights so that uh, the consumer, right, maybe a business owner, or maybe a, a data scientist, he can get uh, the right kind of an information for him to manage and make sense out of the data what is available. So this is where we have clearly. So we shift, we, we did, we took that idea, we went ahead and we tried to you know, uh, make sure that the challenges of managing made made easier with cloud console, Absolutely. right? So yeah. you always had a challenge where uh, uh, storage management is siloed, right? You have a storage which has to be managed for production or DR independently, or if you have it in a branch. So we came up with the, the same intelligent data, data platform roadmap, and then we created a data services cloud console, wherein you can have a fleet of storages can be managed, provisioned, 
together. So we are having further roadmap, which can make a customer's life easier, trying to add HCI, trying to add a different types of workload, uh, wherein even a disaster recovery can be managed from the same side. Thank you, Santosh, for the insight. Thanks. I guess uh, we have a good information about why HP storage is, uh, you know, the killer for the storage market in the, you know, right now with the new trends going on. And any questions, uh, we're happy to take from panel or from the audience. They can unmute themselves. See, it is. Hello. 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 Okay, yeah, you can you can unmute and ask questions. Uh, there is a question from Abdul Rasik from Alpha Data. If you're using NVMe drives in a in a traditional rack mount server, do we need the smart array controllers? And how the multiple RAID works for NVMe drives? No, we If we're using NVMe drives in a traditional rack mount servers, do we need the smart array controllers? And how um, does the multiple RAID or AID work for NVMe drives? I, I think there are new RAID controllers that are released, something called as Tri Mode. Tri Mode is something which is transparent, right? So you can you can connect directly to the IO. So this is something which is used nowadays to manage the RAID level. I guess these are in the DL385 V2 yeah. version. Rack mount server, the latest V2 version, yeah. right? So it's available. And I guess, uh, like Santo shared, it's in the Tri Mode. The customers can uh, try and work on that. Question maybe just to emphasize what there are different capabilities. As the move to the cloud, what could be the different capabilities that we can bring supporting customers in their data strategy with the cloud? So, how we can integrate or move the data as per the needs between on premises to the cloud? So, what type of HPE offering can be offered in that regard? Through Cloud Console, we have an option with, with, with our newest uh, data protection software, Zerto, built inside. So you can move from your on-premise to cloud, as well as manage from here. So you could have a production environment in your uh, premises and cloud or multiple clouds. And you can use this uh, you know, you know, specifically to manage a different work. Correct me, Santosh. Uh, so right now with Aletra portfolio, we have a data services cloud console as an option. Right? Yeah, yeah. In when that deploy, same cloud console, you could deploy. provide Zerto as a data protection data to protection. take backups. Right. Also, to you can do uh, moving towards cloud and trying to manage to cloud. So if okay. you go back one slide, so you can see the portfolio which says unified cloud, cloud data, data management. management. So these products have the cloud console inbuilt, and also they push to the new generation of Nimble as well. So if you have the storage portfolio, which supports the cloud management console, I think the Letra 6,000 and uh, 9,000, and also the Nimble latest generation, you can uh, transparently move the data to the cloud. Any other questions? On the... Yes, I have a question. Um, we, we all know that AI and machine learning now is in the game. Uh, of storages. So I would like to have some more information on how the customers are benefit in terms of uh, in terms of availability, in terms of um, their own resources. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this? And he's talking about InfoSight, how it can elaborate. Uh, yeah, machine learning. Machine learning. So, InfoSight has uh, got AI in me, uh, trying to correlate the, you know, the, the, the logs, what it is in collected. It is as I mentioned earlier. I think we have we have all the storages, whatever are we connected. They have these information, so it, it correlates. Also, it has got additional cross analytics engine, which gives you uh, 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 information regarding how any challenges can be mitigated when it comes to VMware or Hyper V. Also, we have gone ahead with giving these information related to SQL uh, database utilization and development. Thank you. Thank you, Santosh. Any other questions? We're getting a lot of questions for storage. So with the growing demand of vSAN solution, how can we address and compete against vSAN to pitch for storage uh, like Primera and Nimble? 
So, see, first of all, uh, any software dependent sol uh, solutions have a challenge when it comes to compression and deduplication. It does not have the efficiency uh, compared to the controller based storages, right? So, so uh, in some times you feel that vSAN based software dependent solutions are good. Some uses, use cases that make sense, but in many other cases, uh, uh, using a traditional storage makes more sense because you get better efficiency for, for the disk what they use. And DHCI can be a combination between both actually, leveraging yes, both yes, advantages. Right. For yes. it. So, and, and also in traditional vSAN, it's very hard to provision a storage from your uh, vSAN based storage to an external application. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more question as well. So as everyone knows, NVMe storages are always expensive and to have a true experience or to see the real performance for mission critical workload and end-to-end -end connectivity, does it, it has to be NVMe, correct? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the next uh, question. Yeah. So we are moving now to the next uh, panel around the cloud experiences. So we would like to welcome the panel to the stage. Like, uh, thank you everybody joining us uh, for this session. This is the last and final session we are having today. And we will be talking about uh, the HP cloud experience uh, uh, also known as the Green Lake. Uh, so we will be carrying uh, uh, or uh, talking about a lot of uh, different challenges and uh, uh, the roadmap ahead, and then as uh, like a use case also. So uh, to begin with, my name is uh, Omar. I'm the Green Lake champion for HPE uh, in uh, Logicom. Uh, so to, just to give you a brief about uh, what Green Lake is, so that everybody here uh, in the audience understands. Uh, I'm sure most of you would already be uh, uh, aware of what Green Lake is. But just to identify, we need to first, to understand Green Lake, we need to first understand what problems it addresses. Uh, so most of us have been in the IT industry for about 15 to 20 years, who would already know uh, the challenges that we had to face with a traditional architecture. So a traditional architecture inherently has two challenges that it throws at us. One is that it is most of the time it's over provisioned and also it's under provisioned. Over provisioning uh, and under provisioning means the resources are more, that is uh, your CPU, your RAM, your storage is either more or it's uh, either less. Uh, when you need a resource in an under provisioned environment, you don't have the availability. That means it has to fall back to your uh, Procurement that means a longer procurement cycle, which also means delay, which means delay in your uh, time to market. Like if you are uh, launching a new product, you don't have the resource, so it delays the time to market. Then, which actually hit back on your agility, your business agility. Your business is not agile enough to address the market. So it has inherent problems, which has again uh, then a subset of its own problems. Uh, then. The entry, uh, the cloud enters the game and it addresses these two challenges and it resolves these challenges. It addresses the under provision and over provisioning problem of a traditional architecture. Uh, but it also adds on its own com complexities and challenges, which are uh, based on cost. It's too expensive to run a workload on cloud. It is uh, security. You never know where your data is. It could be here, it could be across the world. And the third one is your availability. Uh, your internet might go down in your house, uh, your office building, your region or your country, any of these places and you're kicked out of the, your environment. So to address these challenges, uh, the uh, HP thought about this challenge in the market and uh, came up with this program uh, HP consumption based model or HP GreenLake. And this program has been running uh, for quite some time, but it has been uh, 
renamed and remodeled to address these newer challenges and has been relaunched as HP GreenLake, as everybody knows. So HP GreenLake is a, a more or less a, a pre-designed solution which addresses uh, your workloads like VDI, automation, uh, containers, data management, data analytics, uh, hybrid cloud, your virtualization stack, uh, be it Microsoft, uh, VMware, or uh, your Oracle, anything that you are running in your, in your, in your uh, enterprise or your office could be run via GreenLake. So GreenLake is, at the end, GreenLake is a solution which is like a, more as the hardware, which will still you have on-prem, but you will consume, you will, you will pay as you consume that particular hardware. So you will have a bit of both, traditional as well as your cloud. Uh, so, but uh, this will give you an idea of what uh, GreenLake is, but there are certainly some challenges, which is still in the market to, you know, address the challenges to uh, push the word forward. Uh, I mean, here, uh, can you address those challenges? I just introduce them. Yeah, thank you, Omar. Thank you, HPE and uh, Logicom for hosting us here and Digital Live Garage for part of this uh, great uh, event. And um, love to you, Omar, about the challenges that we are, the few people are facing in pitching in the uh, the other service model from HPE, HPE GreenLake, is actually uh, that we used to uh, go to the customer and present a product. Okay, so we are presenting a solution, we are presenting a platform, but it's no longer the case. Now we have to pitch in a model, which is a combination of financial and business model. But in the, at the same time, eventually it will go down to the platform and hardware level, yeah. okay? So here in the slide, uh, what is mentioned here, this is not the challenges that we are facing, but this is what the customer concerns are. So the first thing is uh, we need to put ourselves in customer shoes, okay? And uh, the most uh, challenging thing, I think for us, uh, the, uh, in spreading the uh, the word in the market is actually uh, to uh, put ourselves in the customer position and think from customer perspective, not from selling perspective. Because if you put yourself in the position where uh, you will pitch in right away green leak, 99% you will not succeed because you need to know what to say and to whom to say it. Okay, there is a lot of uh, aspects of GreenLake that you need to decorticate and you, uh, you take each one on the side in order to address it to a specific person. You cannot talk about GreenLake to a C executive level uh, as you talk about GreenLake to an IT manager or uh, to procurement. It's not. It's not the same. Um, also, if you have that, you know, uh, a pressure to bring out the uh, Green Lake as a product to the customer, most probably the customer will not hear you back. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need to uh, start from the bottom if you are talking to uh, an IT uh, manager or uh, an engineer. Mm -hmm. You need to show him that you are going to uh, do consultation for him to help him improve how he manage his uh, platform or the workload or the setup he has. So, and HPE has the tools for that. It's a door opener toward showing him that he's not managing his hardware correctly. For example, Cloud Physics. Cloud Physics is a, is a tool that you can run on customer, uh, customer uh, premises or remotely, and it will gather and uh, bring out outcome that is very simple to understand and to know that there is obviously an over provisioning. And the upper provisioning, 95% of the case, it will be there. Okay. So then you can slowly pitch in the as a service operator. The second challenge that I see is how to position GreenLake in the first place. If you are going to uh, 
but for example, if you say that a green lake for HPE is the same as uh, Azure for Microsoft or uh, AWS for Amazon, it is not right. It is not. Right. You cannot compete with public cloud. You are not there to. Yes, please. Ah, oh, one minute left. Okay. So you 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 are not there to. Uh, take out public cloud from the picture because GreenLake itself can be positioned in between, okay, for private cloud. Exactly. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is the challenge. This, the third challenge, which is the last one, uh, okay, for the sake of time, is how to show the benefits of GreenLake, okay? There is a lot of things around GreenLake. Uh, GreenLake Central, which is uh, a combination of uh, uh, tools that are integrated in the cloud console uh, management, okay? Data Ops Manager, uh, DSCC, uh, Aruba Central. So all of these, how do you, you bring the value out to the customer? This is another challenge that we are facing as people there. So that, that's it. Well, that told me that <laughs> the time is up. So it, it's a hot topic, I know. Yes. There's a lot to be said about it, okay? But I tried to summarize the challenges that uh, we are facing in spreading the word uh, in the market regarding the green data. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Amir. Okay. Uh, uh, can we have on that, uh, we have on the poll. So there's a poll uh, which you are, uh, uh, again, go ahead and par participate and let us know your insights. Uh, we really welcome all of your uh, inputs here because this is really gonna, uh, uh, you know, we're gonna understand more about the market and see how it's uh, playing out for you guys. Recording in progress. Just uh, scroll down. Everyone knows about this one. the right uh, question for them because most of them are unaware of you. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, kindly go ahead and uh, address these questions. Only 14 have so far uh, answered. We would like all of you to participate and give us a clearer uh, insight into this uh, poll. So uh, I'll just give it like two more seconds and then I'm gonna end the poll. Okay, uh, thank you. Coming back to the panel. Uh, now I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, Shanavas to address uh, the panel here and talk about the, uh, what is GreenLake all about? How does it all get uh, like come together? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Shanavas. I'm from HPE, and I what I would like to talk about is what is GreenLake, and, and what I've, I've heard Amin and uh, Umar talk about the challenges, what it is. But to 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 put it simple, Antonio Neri said, "Cloud is not a destination; it's a experience, and this is the experience." that HPE wants to bring to the customer. The pay as you go, the, the simple uh, one platform to manage their, their hybrid environment, grow up and down as it, and, uh, as in when the customer requires them and manage it to a level where customer is comfortable. Customers, the challenges we are talking about, the complex environment, and from the from the polls as well, we could see that 
what's the future? It's hybrid. HP had seen it 10 years back. That's when we introduced GreenLake, which was at the time known as flexible, flexible capacity, but now renamed into a, a GreenLake, but it's the experience that we want to bring to manage this platform for the customer so that they're able to manage the, the complex IT environment, IT landscape, which could be the multiple clouds, or it could be the, the private cloud as it used to be called. Now you can see all this Gartner, IDC talking about dedicated cloud, which is a cloud which could be in the edge, in the, uh, in the data center, in the co-location, or in the public. So this is what is Greenly called Green about. Now the Greenly services would include <coughs> different workloads like the VDI, which the team was talking about in the, in the, in the first panel and then the, the, the different um, AI, MLOps, uh, as well as the, uh, the bare metal, the virtual machines, all these can be managed under one single platform using GreenLake Central, where it integrates all this together to make sure that they can correlate, they can get insights on, on the usage, ensure that the right team have the right budget allocated and the costs are, are spent based on the business outcomes. So this, this is exactly what GreenLake is. And if you want to talk about, we can talk a lot about it, but the GreenLake Lighthouse, which is the next level where we have the platform, the, 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 the platform software, which is used to ensure that there is control for the whole environment, and, and also it's orchestrated to ensure that customers can provision different workloads as and when they require. And then you have these blueprints which are optimized for certain workloads. Customers can change the resources required differently based on their, for example, if they have containers requiring for a certain workloads, and it is increased at one, one stage, they can bring it up because it's already there. Yes. And, and they can uh, decommission those and bring virtual machines at later, later stages. So this, this, can, this is the flexibility you have in, in this platform. Thank you, uh, Shanavas. Now uh, I would like to ask our uh, esteemed uh, uh, panel member from Technizon to give us a case study. Uh, because he's uh, deployed Green Lake as a uh, uh, as a uh, solution already, so Pramod, please go. Hi everyone, my name is Pramod. I am from uh, Technizon, and uh, thank you HP and Logicom for organizing this uh, panel meet today. So yes, uh, we did deploy uh, Green Lake in our data center. So what we do is basically we are a private cloud services provider in the Middle East region. So our customers uh, always look for optimizing their on-premise infrastructure, building new solutions. Uh, getting newer technologies every day and uh, they can't really do uh, capex every time they want to do that so that is where they choose uh, service providers like us so that they can get a gamut of services in one go and pay for it as as per their consumption so we were already always having a challenge of doing capex first ourselves and then giving it back to the customer in an opex model so that is when green lake came into the picture and it played a very big role for us where we, we move our services through the OPEX model and we also charge back the same to the customer. And uh, the second way it has helped us is a quick go-to market. So we always have the buffer capacity with us. We can launch new services uh, on the go. Uh, I, I, can, I can say boldly that we have launched at least a couple of services uh, after we have deployed GreenLake. And that would not have been possible in a traditional infrastructure uh, because we always have the spare capacity where we can do the tests and we can run uh, the new solutions, ask the customers to do the UATs. Uh, so that's a, that's a very good thing of GreenLake. We always get extra capacity and we don't get charged for it unless we use it. Yeah. 
So as a service provider and again as a startup in the cloud service space, uh, we always we highly appreciate these kind of uh, benefits that we get from the vendors, where they support us with a uh, with a model where we pay as we grow. Uh, we start small and we grow big, and that's the model that has been really helpful for us. So the chargeback makes sense all the way through the yes, whole pipeline. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions for the session? I think there is no. Anybody from the audience? Maybe you can raise now. I think uh, they already over. <laughs> yeah, please. please. Uh, from the audience poll as well, we got to uh, from the audience poll as well, we got to know the same uh, you know, trend. The trend is that uh, there was question: uh, Do customers know about this? Uh, you know, uh, green light. I think it was maybe, maybe, and it was you know, I, I the trend is not in a. In our favor, trend is not in the green green lakes table. So my question is that there has to be a strategy if you want. That definitely, this has been based on. This has been built based on some strategy. That strategy is still lying with the you know gurus. So that that has to you know we have to unlock it and we have to give it to the people like me I mean, who can this? who can utilize it to go to the customer and uh, sort of you know catalyze being being uh, catalyze the reaction. And get the results in our favor. Yeah. Precipitate the results. So that's that's what I want. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's um, you know a combination of business, financial, and technology model. <clears throat> so the um, definition of a go-to-market strategy in this case will be a bit difficult. First of all, you need to profile the customer that you are addressing the message to. Okay. There are uh, what we call the uh, CMM. The um, capability and maturity model of a customer. A customer that is used to uh, get his hardware randomly just because he has budget cannot be uh, uh, talked to uh, the uh, as a service uh, way. No way, okay? You need to educate him. You need to make him standardized, first of all, okay? Then uh, you need as well to, um, to uh, educate him or uh, get him to the next level, which is the manage and control way of uh, uh, managing his setup. Okay, then you can bring up the as a service and all the benefits behind. Uh, to, to add up to that, uh, the different profiles, what he's talking about, like the IT managers or the IT heads, they have a different challenge. And and the and the finance, they have a different challenge. They need to ma manage their budget within the uh, within the within the budget what is allocated for certain projects. If you look, if you go to uh, the uh, the security team, they have a different challenge. So when you address these different profiles, you need to you need to address it with the with the you know, what is the challenge that GreenLake solves for them. Now, traditionally, as he mentioned, that most of our sale for a, for for a IT used to be to the IT manager. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we that. that's that's the general trend used to be. But now you need to consider the business as well yeah. and the finance. The business are the one who is actually investing to spend, and they are the one who is interested to understand. To make sure that that cash flow is in line with their outcome from that business, so this is where they will benefit from us. So you need to sell it to the different profiles, not the traditional IT managers or IT administrators. That is where most of the failure happens when you try to get, sell green. So the request comes from the IT managers, yeah. not from the business. Perfect. You're, you're, right. you're right. 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 right, but you need to formulate a use case. Yeah. Without a use case, you need to ask and out of it, there will be business outcome. It's very difficult to pitch in uh, the green light. And one more to... case is also like uh, CapEx and OpEx. So, so when, we, when we talk about green light, yeah. uh, they say don't compare with CapEx. So all, already when, no. when the BOK yeah. comes or before the BOK, there is competition. There are others who push the BOK. Why don't you buy this? Don't go for this. Right. So uh, 
uh, in HP scenario, BOQ is simple. They say, okay, I need two servers, three servers. They, rather than green, like they go, I'll buy the solution. Yeah, they know the cost. We saw this mistake over and over again happening uh, because you know we are learning from our mistakes. Okay, uh, we are learning how to uh, present GreenLake to the customers uh, by the day. Okay, and the moment you are giving the option to the customer to go with Capix, while you were talking to him for a long time about GreenLake, then you will have you a it. bottleneck. Okay, you will be in a bottleneck situation where you will not know where to where to go, and obviously the customer will go with capex. You cannot say no to capex. Absolutely, <laughs> that is a challenging, right? So Absolutely. they'll ask for all options. Absolutely. It's not customer that's asking why, for why, only one option. Yeah, that's why I was emphasizing about the messaging itself to yeah. whom it was put, and 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 ask the right questions. Yeah. Right. The right people. Where to the, the right people? The right people. Yeah. And then then it comes from the IT, for example, for the same requirement. You should you need to ask what's What's the pur purpose of this? Why are you getting this? Is it going to solve a business problem? Yeah. If, if, if that is going to prob uh, uh, solve a business problem, it might be a short term. And the top management, the business, do not want to solve the sh short term problem. They want to solve the long term problems. Yeah. And that's where you will ignite those, ignite those thoughts within the customer to go for as a service because everybody is going for it yeah they are used to it everyone is consuming things as a service they are using water and electricity they are using a subscription on the cloud uh, microsoft 365 okay it's already it's, there it's, it's the phone bills everyone it's phone bill, everything bills, but even, even, yeah, yeah the, the trend yeah. is going to be uber and, uh, and so on. nobody is going to buy cars for our one like later on the, exactly. the same trend is going to happen yeah. I have a question for a panelist. If I, uh, if if a, there is an SMB customer who wants to go for a green lake, and especially like example, he has a smaller environment, he needs a backup, and also to be managed. Is there anything green lake can do? Yes, there is, there is a backup as a service that can be uh, uh, provided uh, because most of these small customers. They do not have the skills, the, the, the time to manage those routine jobs, which might be a bit complex, need to solve when it comes to an issue because their, their data is critical. And we do have those services, including the management of, uh, ma management of the backup, ensuring that restores can be done. It is, it is part of this. <laughs> right. I have a question. Yesterday I was speaking with one of the customers who I have been engaging for a long time now and uh, they have global presence for GreenLake and uh, the question that he, he has thrown, on, thrown at me was okay let's say I went on GreenLake now you know the architecture and everything is on uh, everything is working fine I have on-prem I have control everything is fine but let's say my Tesla line is down so will I still be able to access the GreenLake the cloud services will still be available or not. So, so I'll. This is, uh, hardware on prem. Yeah. So, so as link. long as he's uh, able to go to his office, he will be able to access his local. So it's on everything as a traditional architecture, but mm -hmm. you're only paying it as you are consuming it. Okay. So you're paying it like you're paying your AWS, your internet, your phone, your Netflix. Mm -hmm. But the hardware is on site. You are able to see it. You can touch it and feel it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a cloud platform that you're providing you just to have a feeling, as you were mentioning, cloud green lake is, a, is a, the consumption based modeling is a cloud experience. Yes. So to further that, we are uh, giving this, uh, uh, you know, the, con uh, the console so that they can, uh, they can uh, access the hardware, they can automate or orchestrate the hardware from the console and certainly check the bills from that same console and maybe check the uh, additional capacities or do a capacity sizing capacity planning if uh, they are uh, consuming more than uh, that they have the you know the hardware that they have if they're consuming more than what they're supposed to then they will actually see the capacity sizing and also be done the same portal so it's hardware which is on site and uh, he's just paying the bills every month to, to cut short his uh, the, the answer actually his business will not be down yeah, that, that's what he's basically. Yeah. His business will not be down. That if if the same workload was in the cloud, his business would be down. Yes, yes. But in this situation, what you're, you in this scenario, what you said, the business is not down. 
but he will not have that full features of the cloud where he's able to see the capacity if the internet is down mm. that is not the but his business is still running so it's like an intranet will work but the internet is down so the this, people who are this connecting the, remotely will not be able to access absolutely oh, that's this is lovely. the beauty this is the beauty of it because it does not this is what the market this is what is. Is. <laughs> that's what yeah. the full control and the flexibility what you're talking about yeah, yeah. in fact i have uh, you know we might have a session with him but uh, nonetheless so this was one of his questions i thought you know, physical barriers which we cannot transfer we cannot beat physics yeah. if we're not able to go somewhere because you've seen, you seen in many situations where aws was down or right recently like last yeah. two months it, it, multiple times last year was yeah. there this year was there it, and there will be those uh, and those think... those few things like i use those uh, robot yeah. cleaners mm -hmm. it was down yes yeah. just because it's my wife a, is calling saying yeah. that how come <laughs> yeah, how absolutely. come it's not working why it's not happening in the this one but it's it was not there the cloud, of course and then i went to twitter and i saw that aws is down yeah <laughs> yeah the answer is there yes so all those ai <laughs> ai robotics goes down then the public goes down but that's why i said mm -hmm. when the internet is down their business is running they are safe that, that that's a very uh, good uh, argument to you know win it over because this is this is what basically my question was about you know what's the market these are the differentiators from public exactly. cloud Absolutely. and we can definitely use this as uh, you know as a case study that see this is what happened and this is here i mean i definitely when i go and i speak with my customer i'll definitely put forth that you know you have everything on prem you have the control you can do whatever testing yeah. you know which is not available when you are working on public cloud and the public cloud is like wherever it is you never know so here it yeah, is in front of you of course yeah so, so the that's, 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 that's the beauty of green lake so yeah, yeah. now my, i got my answer and that's why people if you've seen that the, the trend is hybrid uh, hybrid yeah yes yeah you saw in the survey yes it's there in the public surveys everywhere and we had seen it we had seen it long back the vision was there from starting from 2010 yes i have i have, I have a question actually for the hpe uh, people here in the uh, uh, in the session it's about a, a topic that um, has been now uh, brought up many times okay it was many customers of world worldwide level uh, what about the green lake for dark side green lake for dark sides yes it is available but not for all technologies okay certain technologies and it need to go through certain criteria because you know in this current world it it is security it is different aspects that need to be looked at so if the real requirement is there and the technology is supportive yes it can be done so it it is like uh, you're min minimizing the um, the input output from the cloud this yeah. is it, it is not it is not minimizing this is where i said the technology there is there are uh, there, there is a, a manual intervention from the customer okay. required to ensure that this metering of their consumption mm -hmm. is taking place and is reported on a regular basis it is it will be available still on the cloud okay. for them to see okay but it might not be directly connected okay and so what about are, the analytics side of things yeah how how, how it's done because yeah, we know that info site is uh, in, an application in, sitting in, on the cloud info so. site cannot be this but it depends on the technology okay. what technology there supportive okay. technologies okay unsupported technologies as well okay great thank you uh, any other questions yeah. um so uh, we're talking about your friends solution so customers they might have in their environment to put the This can be software, this can be hardware. My question here is, does uh, GreenLake can approach this kind of environment to the applications? And the second question I have is, uh, what kind of uh, support level agreement we are giving uh, to this uh, to, to the GreenLake part? Uh, as as uh, the, to answer your first question about the multi-vendor software that is coming along with the uh, the the hardware HP hardware, yes, as I mentioned, it's the experience. And we bring that experience along with our partner vendors like VMware, it could be Veeam, it could be any of the multi-vendor solutions. And it is 
part of the the whole experience services that we deliver uh, there are there are certified partners softwares that is deployed along with the uh, along uh, in the green lake solution to answer the first part of it and the second one if you can repeat the second question um, actually it's not only software it can be hardware for instance they can be like security components that uh, they might, might not be hp is it something that also can be applicable it, 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 there are cases where it can be but uh, the metering and and those can be a challenges at times so it, uh, it need to be looked at from case to case basis yes it is possible but case to case basis so like for example somebody, somebody might want a firewall so how will you meter that so so we have to like uh, case to case you will address that yeah so. firewall for example it's it's going to be a static yeah, it's it's not going to be a, a but if it's the part of the overall solution it can be accommodated within the green solution yes that was my question and the second question is what is uh, what is the the service level agreement a green lake is giving to the customers service level, it's the highest level of service that is provided from hp which is the complete care on any of the uh, um, platform that is provided and as i mentioned this is the experience and this is why we want to give the, that full experience of the complete care to the customer to the whole uh, landscape which is under the green lake to the customer so it's it's the complete care service there. i have a question to promote so you're a consumer of green lake now so and you're a service provider uh, so how would you uh, like how is your process of uh, getting uh, a contract signed with hp and the whole green lake scenario because you're a user right now we want to know your experience yeah uh, see that the reason why we opted for green lake in the first place is because we did a lot of capex in the beginning uh, and uh, it was a continuous cycle happening every quarter or every six months and uh, we wanted to stop that model because that involves a lot of capacity planning as well. So initial configuration for the Green Lake took some time, like how you would do any on-prem uh, traditional capex solution. But anything after that is just a click of a button. So now the entire team, the entire system, the ecosystem from me to my partner, my distributor, and HP knows what I need and how I will take the order next. So I they uh, analyze the capacity. And they always put in the buffer and uh, the ordering process is very very much simplified so it has taken a big load off my team where we don't do any capacity planning anymore we know what we want to buy and we, we just tell them the increments and we get the hardware delivered so it has made the process very simple and uh, to his question uh, did you have other uh, devices like security devices or uh, software so how do you manage it along uh, with so, uh, it's been six months now since we started using green lake and it is the first step for us into GreenLake. So we are just in the compute process of GreenLake. Uh, we intend to go storage as well as the other infrastructure uh, and the new data center, which we are going to launch. We want to go a full GreenLake model where we can integrate everything in a, in a consumption-based process. Yes, we still do have uh, uh, existing CapEx invested uh, equipment for security networking, uh, which are there in the data center, but maybe not anymore going forward. No, like how do you manage both uh, because you have a green lake uh, through hpe and other devices yeah so those are not in the uh, in the opex model only green lake is so it's kind of simpler that way as well because we have already paid for it and it's there in the data center for the next two three years uh, green lake again yes it is something that we are starting new so we are currently we are managing both uh, in, a, in a parallel situation i would say but going forward we will not be doing that we want to move everything to opex Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think we don't have any more questions. Uh, I would, uh, Prenka, you want to uh, uh, do the ending statement? Thank you, everybody, for the thank you. Uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Prenka, please. So thank you, everybody. I mean, I think uh, we had great participation today uh, from the people here. And uh, thanks to the people. I think still we have about 35 people listening to us. So this was a wonderful session. I'm so glad that we could discuss multiple things. There were various topics that came in, all the trending topics. And uh, today, everybody must have got a better insight, all the people listening to us. And a big thank you from Logicom team uh, to all of you for making the time. I know it's busy times. Everyone's so busy. But all of you are here physically present with us. 
uh, to share this uh, day with us and uh, you know keep all your important work aside. So, uh, and uh, Logicom team, uh, thank you for organizing uh, and uh, working on this for a long time. And big, big thank you to Murad, Dina, and Rebecca, Shikhausa. she's not listening to me. Uh, they've been working on this uh, for a long time uh, in terms of organizing, you know, speaking to all of us. And you remember the number of calls we've had on top of this. So we want to organize much more things like this in the future. I think this is very beneficial. Such discussions are uh, you know, very healthy for all of us in this IT environment. So I hope uh, we can, uh, you know, come along again to have uh, discussions on uh, different topics. And somewhere, uh, I mean, uh, you know, nice to have people speaking, hearing from others what they have to say. You know, it uh, gives us perspective, it gives us insight. So today was that, and that was the whole intention for this. So I think it's completely fulfilled. It's a happy day for us. Uh, it's a happy day for you. Uh, so that's it. Thanks, everybody on the call. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon. So.